Students, it's good to have you. Up to this point in time in our class, we've learned all of the basic principles, or you have learned all of the basic principles needed in order to cover or uh, meet all of the objectives that I've set for this class. So essentially, you're done. Now, I realize we have at least a month left until class actually ends this semester. So you might be wondering, what are we going to do for the rest of our time? Well, what I'm going to do is a series of lectures that I call special topics lectures. Now, let me explain what those actually are. The special topics lectures are a systematic review of all of the material covered in Gen Chem over both semesters. The reason that I'm having you guys do this, and the reason I subject you to this torture of going through special topics lectures, is uh, for two purposes. The first is because I want to prepare you for the final. The final exam in this class is a Standardized American Chemical Society, or ACS, normalized exam. The beauty of that final is that if you prepare well, and I will do all that I can to, to provide you with material to help you prepare for that over the course of the next few weeks in, in the special topics lectures, you'll be able to um, do well on the exam and be able to compare your performance with how the rest of general chemistry students nationwide are also doing. And I will email you guys back uh, your scores and your results and tell you what percentile you fell in. Now, believe it or not, that's actually a very good thing. For example, if you do well and you fall, for example, in the 87th percentile, let's say, that means that you performed better than 87% of all other students in the United States on that exam. Is that cool? I think it's cool because you can actually put it on a resume. For example, if you're applying for graduate school or other professional programs or even a job, you can say, I got in the 87th percentile on an American Chemical Society exam. And if I were an employer reading that, that would actually impress me because I'd say, yeah, this is a, a student who's very smart and hardworking. The second reason that I'm doing that is because I believe that uh, doing the systematic review of all of general chemistry will help any of you guys who go on to take standardized entrance exams for uh, med school, dent school, things like that. So exams like the MCAT, the DAT, the PCAT, the GRE, things like that that all have general chemistry sections in them, you can review this material in preparation for them to help you uh, do a, hopefully a little bit better on them than you otherwise would. So this material will always be here on YouTube for you. <clears throat> now that said, I want to tell you a story. It initially might sound like it has nothing to do with this topic, but it is crucial that you guys listen to this. A number of years ago when I was an undergraduate, I took calculus-based physics. When we had our first exam in that class, I prepared, I thought, you know, for an amount of time that I thought was sufficient. And then I took the exam and I totally bombed it. I got like a 45 or something like that. It was an F. And uh, I was a little bit depressed. Uh, however, I took the now graded exam and looked at it and realized as I started combing through it, seeing what I did right and what I did wrong, that almost every single problem that my professor put on his exam came direct from the homework problems that he assigned and that we as students did as, uh, you know, for a pittance of points in his class. Now, I'm not saying that he copied them verbatim, but I could see that the homework or, or the, the exams mirrored the homework, enough so that if I knew how to do the homework very, very well, I bet I could do well on the exam. So what I did for the next exam is rather than uh, just kind of study in an abstract, unfocused way, I took the homework problems that we'd done preparatory for the next exam, and I redid all of them. See, I'd done all, them all one time, and we had a, a recitation with the TA who helped us kind of navigate through them, uh, through the challenging ones. But rather than just uh, do them the one time to get my points, I got my graded homework assignments back, and then I did them again. And the way I did that was by getting a huge stack of paper out of the recycle uh, paper thing at the school. So anytime I saw a piece of paper that had a blank side, I would take it and I'd use it as scratch paper. So I redid every single one of those homework questions, every single one from all of the homeworks that were going to be covered on the next exam. It took me, and I once again, I did every single one. It took me about uh, 16 total hours of time to redo every single homework problem the first time. I should mention here that I didn't do all of this in one sitting. I sort of spread it over a couple of days. I mean, at the time, I had a full class load, and I was working full time, and I had a kid, so I had a lot on my plate. But I still managed to do it. I lost a lot of hours of sleep doing it, but, but anyway, didn't all do it just in one sitting. Okay, hopefully that's clear. <laughs> then I took that stack of scratch paper, and I threw it away. Well, I recycled it. Then I got a second stack of scratch paper that I once again got by dumpster diving into the recycle bin. And I did all of those homework problems again. Now, this time that I did it, this is, uh, I guess, my third time doing the homework problems. It took me about half the time. It took me about eight hours. 
And then I took that stack and I recycled it. I took another stack and I did it all again. This time, which was now my fourth time doing the homework problems, I was able to do them all in four hours. And then I took that and recycled it and grabbed another stack. My point in doing this, the repetition was I wanted to make sure that I had drilled into my head how to do these problems so that I knew them. I mean, I knew them as fluidly as I knew my own name. So I ended up doing all the homework problems a total of about four to five times. By the time I got to my fifth time, I could do every single homework problem in that stack in about an hour, an hour and a half. So what did that do for my exam? Well, on the next exam, I walked into it and I read over the exam and I knew every single problem. I knew how to do every single problem that he had on that exam. And I whizzed through it. I got done with his exam like 20, 25 minutes and I got 100%. Now I realized that that process took a long time, all of the doing and redoing of the homework but it paid off. And guess what? I did that same process for all of my succeeding exams and I got 100% on every single exam for the rest of the semester. Even though I had a 45% on my first exam, which I had to keep, we didn't get to drop an exam or anything, I still finished that semester with an A-, minus, which I think is pretty stellar given the fact that that A- minus came from one exam score being an F. Now, just so you know, I also did this exact same process for a lot of my other classes. In fact, most of my other classes from that point forward in college. So I put in tons and tons of time, very, very small amount of sleep. And by doing it this way, I was able to get almost straight A's from that point forward or very, very close. So this in a college setting really is the price of success. The price of success is working really hard and almost never sleeping. So what's my point in telling you this? I want you, my students, especially from this point forward for the rest of the semester to make sure that you pay the price in time and repetition. I will give you homework problems that will help cover all of the concepts that you guys need to know in order to nail that final exam, but I cannot put in the time for you. So I am begging you, my students, please make sure that you put in the time. And don't think that just because you did each homework problem one time, that's enough. It's not enough unless it happens to be enough for you. But for me, I discovered that I had to do every single homework problem about five times minimum in order to really, really know it. Some of you guys might not have to do it that many times, but that's how many times I had to do it. So I'm inviting you, my students, to make sure that you pay that price. Do all of the homework problems that I recommend as many times as it takes, and it might be fewer than five for you, it might be more than five, but as many times as it takes in order to make sure that you know these concepts as well as you know your own name. You get to that point, you can walk in that exam and the exam will feel like a kindergarten exam to you. You'll be able to just bam, 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 get 100% and walk out proud of yourselves. I know you can do it. I know each of you, my students, and I know you can do it. So I'm begging you, please do. And I want you to keep that in mind as we move forward uh, with the rest of our special topics video. So with that said, please stay tuned to the next video, which will be my first in uh, my series of special topics videos preparing you for the upcoming exams.